Hey all, John Ram Dean with you here in the FN studios and this is Fight News Now Extra, your daily dose of mixed martial arts news and notes. Joining me in a few moments is Robin Black to break down some of the top stories making waves, including a former Strikeforce champion asking for his release from the UFC, a former Bellator title holder has his next fight booked, and six new bouts have been added to the Ultimate Fighter 20 finale. It appears former K-1 and Strikeforce standout Kung Lee is on the outs with the Ultimate Fighting Championship. Speaking to Josh Grosh on Wednesday, the 42-year-old Lee stated that he's informed his manager Gary Ibarra to request his release from the world's leading mixed martial arts promotion. But this reason stemming from a dispute over an alleged Kung Lee drug test failure following his loss to Michael Bisping in August. Lee stated to Gross that I prefer not to put the effort into something I don't believe in anymore. Former Bellator Bantamweight champion Eduardo Dantes will return to Bellator for the first time since dropping his title to Joe Warren earlier this year when he collides with Mike the Marine Richmond at Bellator 134 on March 27th. A training partner of UFC standouts Jose Aldo and Hennem Barrao at Novo Uniao in Brazil, Dantes has fought just twice this year going 1-1 with the title defeat to Warren while Richmond enters the bout hot off a 46-second KO triumph over Nam Pham last month. And with the Ultimate Fighters Season 20 coming to an end, the UFC can finally announce some of the fights happening on the finale card, set for December 12th in Las Vegas. Six separate bouts have been added to the event, including Felice Herrig taking on Elisa Ellis, Heather Joe Clark taking on Beck Rollins, and Tisha Torres takes on Angela Magana. Joined by my good friend, Mr. Robin Black, uh, Kung Lee, once out of the UFC, I'm not surprised, you know, the UFC... Once the whole drug situation happened, they didn't seem to have his back. It's like, well, I could stay with these guys, or I could go over to Bellator and hang out with my buddy Scott Coker, who promoted me when I was in Strike Force. Big fan of Kung Lee. Of big, course. Big fan of Kung Lee. He's a great, his skills are unbelievable. He's a great fighter. This is a little transparent. Like, my buddy over there runs this thing. Could you guys please let me out? Let me out because you didn't have my back. Look, man, if. If it looks like a duck, we're all looking at something going, I'm pretty sure that's a duck. And then they come back and they do a test and they're like, yep, it's a duck. We're all gonna go, see, it was a duck. And then, like, no, actually it wasn't. Yeah, we're not sure, the test was off. Still looks like a duck and anybody who kind of knows ducks, and if, let's put it another what way. What are you trying to say? Okay, let's put it another way. If Kung Lee himself looked at a guy and was like, that guy's probably on juice. And then it turned out that a test came in and it said, that guy's on juice. He'd go, see, that guy's on juice. Everybody would do it. If later it comes back and it's like, no, it's not definitive or it may we not have been. Up with it test. looked that way. You felt it was that way. Everybody assumed. It, Can't it, prove it could nothing. happen. Can't Anybody prove could get caught nothing. up in that. I, that's, it's know? true. But at the same time, we have to look at the reality of things. And the reality that we know is there are a lot of people using stuff competing at the highest level, whether that's Bellator, whether that's Strike Force, whether it's the Ultimate Fighting Championship, there's a reality to things. And I, I think that sometimes that the organization has to have the back of the fighters and they have to understand like where these guys came from and it didn't seem that that was the case. I, I, I gotta disagree. In my convoluted game of duck, duck, goose here, sure. what I'm trying to say is if he put himself in the UFC situation and they were handed a thing that said you failed the drug test, he too would go, this guy failed the drug test. You know what I mean? It's, sure. like, it's not like they accused him of doing steroids. A lot of people thought that a 45 year old who was that ripped, there was some anecdotal discussion about it. Then a, a test was handed to them that said he failed. Nobody's going to have your back in that case. Sure. They're, you're, this is just you an excuse. You open this thing up, you lay it out, and you go, says you failed the drug test. Later it's wrong. on, it comes There's back no, that it was wrong, uh, but uh, anybody sure. would do sure, that. Sure, that's true. What I'm saying is it's an excuse to be able to go, hey, I'd rather hang out with my yeah, buddy of course, Scott but over here. Can you blame him? No. That's, I mean, you know, you see that your buddy Scott Coker is doing big things with the Bellator organization. He's treated you well in the past. Maybe you have a problem with your current employer, and that's just one reason to make that move over there. I'm sure there's a lot of yeah, other reasons yeah. why he made the move, but just that's the yeah. straw that broke the camel's back. Yeah, I'm not saying that it doesn't make sense for this great athlete to go f uh, and fight for a great organization that is run by a great friend. That makes total sense. What I am saying is his <laughs> reasoning is pretty weird. Sure. Uh, it, it turned out that I failed a drug test, and so they acted the way that anybody would act if I failed a drug test. Later on, it turned out that that wasn't the case. 
I mean, that is what it is. What's the advantage of Kung Lee going over to uh, Bellator opposed to staying with the UFC? We all know that UFC is the biggest organization in the world. Why would somebody decide to go to the second best organization? Uh, I, it, that's a good question. There's a lot of them. But the biggest one is if you are the biggest guy, if you're John Jones, if you're Ronda Rousey, you know, if you're the champion, the UFC is where you want to be. If you're the brand new guy coming up, going for that brass ring, the UFC is a pretty good place to be. It's where all the action is when you tell your grandmother, I'm fighting for the UFC. She knows what that means. She doesn't know what a Bellator is. Mm -hmm. She never heard of a Bellator. So, you know, is that some animal? She's not sure. Uriah Faber told us that was one of the reasons why he went, went to, obviously the goal was to get to the UFC, even though he was at the pinnacle of the sport competing in the WEC where Anthony Pettis yeah. fought and yeah. Carlos Condit yeah. fought. He had a shiny Hendricks. belt that That's said right. he was the champion of his weight class he, in the whole world. That's right. Everybody always asked asked him, well, is, is that the same as the UFC? Like, yeah. what, that, like what, junior what, UFC? Yeah, exactly. Like, you know, so he yeah. said it was very, very frustrating because sure. people didn't know the brand. Yeah. But why, why do the fighters care? What difference does it make? Because we've seen Robbie Lawler, for example, was making $90,000 fighting in the Strike Force organization. Yeah. There's a lot of fighters in the UFC right now that are the caliber of Robbie Lawler that are not making that type yeah. of money. Well, that's exactly where I was going. If you're the brand new guy, the UFC is where you want to go. If you're the champ and you're the big money guy, the UFC is where you want to go. That that little area right below the surface where you're a, we were talking about it today, you're a Sam Stout, you're a Joe Lozon. They, they do well in the UFC, but now that uniform, they're not going to get paid like, or a Kung Lee. Kung Lee's a popular athlete. His endorsements yep. probably give him 40 grand, but he's number 20 on the rankings. Now he's going to get 10 grand or whatever everybody else of his ranking gets. So there's a lot of little things like that where you're a star, but not yet a superstar. You could probably make a lot more money uh, in one FC or, or Bellator. But I think it just comes down to matchmaking, and I think that's one of the reasons why Kung Lee and other fighters will go to Bellator, because it's like, let's work together. Let's try to give us competitive matchups for me, the fighter, and great fights for the fans. I think that's what it comes down to. Yeah, Don't you agree? I, I, I agree, and uh, I, it totally makes sense to me why Kung Lee would want to go. I think that would be a great fit for him. It'd be good for Scott. It'd be good for Bellator, but I just think his, he, they didn't have my back when I failed the drug test <laughs> <laughs> until I didn't, until I unfailed it. That, that's not a real good reason. Where will Kung Lee end up? Will he retire as a fighter for the UFC, or will he make his way to Bellator? A question that will be answered or not in the future. That is it for us. Don't go anywhere. More Fight News Now Extra is still coming at you.